Ladies, welcome to another Self-Love Conversations. My name is Gloria Ward, and I am so happy that you ladies are going to join us tonight for this amazing Self-Love Conversation. We have Miss Vanessa Gordon. Now, she is the CEO and publisher of East End Taste, and she's also the founder of the Hamptons Interactive Brunch Event Series. But tonight, we are going to talk about something that is... Um, very eye-opening and something that we need to discuss, and that's emotional codependency and self-worth. So, Vanessa, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, codependency is something I went through, actually, um, with my ex-husband, and uh, it, it went on for a long time. But they said, you know, Codependency, I found this quote, is that codependency is a circular relationship in which one person needs the other person who in turn needs to be needed. And the codependent person known as the giver feels worthless unless they are needed by and making a sacrifice for the enabler, otherwise known as the taker, right? And right. so when we come, when we talk about this whole thing of codependency, um, like what what is your insight and what is your thoughts on that? What, so perhaps in, uh, speaking from my perspective is I've been aware that I've had perhaps these codependent, you know, characteristics or qualities for a very long time. Uh, but for me, you know, perhaps most recently, just because of a number of events that have unfolded, um, for me, I've perhaps wondering where and where they came from specifically and why um, it seems, you know, from perhaps, you know, unfolding everything, it was apparent while I was in college, uh, not so much high school, but college specifically for some reason. And most recently in the last few years, however, I should also acknowledge that throughout I've been married, I've been with my husband for over 16 years uh, married for 12 that I have technically been showcasing those you know tendencies or qualities if you will throughout the marriage mm -hmm. and and what do you say those qualities are because you know a lot of people would think that they're not codependent but what what are some of the signs that you see so specifically with me uh yeah it's I mean the the word enabling comes to mind right away um so you know it's you know, my husband has, um, uh, should say, has had some, you know, he's, he's so sober now, but he had some mm -hmm. issues in the past, I'll just say very, you know, gingerly. Um, right. But uh, yeah, let's put it this way, but I fought so hard to make sure that nobody knew. Mm. Um, in the same way. And I was, and I guarded that so carefully even putting my, you know, sacrificing myself, my business um, for periods of time, um, canceling appointments very suddenly, uh, switching my schedule around, um, getting uh, caregivers, even though my, my husband was home, but yeah. he was in bed sleeping when he yeah. was really, you know, it's a whole, whole other story. So I just did gotcha. everything in my power. I put myself way last, I'll just mm -hmm. say. Mm hmm. And and I'm thinking about I'm thinking about my situation. It was more like, you know, uh, for us, we were we were breaking up. Uh, but something in my mind, Vanessa, said that, you know, I still needed him. I needed the I needed the uh, the security. Right. Yeah. I needed the I needed the the my superhero because that's what I used to call him. I needed my superhero. Yeah in that time and in my mind there was nobody that can do the stuff that I knew that he would do for me right and he and and a part of him I know would love that but at the same time when you win it and you start to recognize what you're in you start to say to yourself like oh my god like Am I really like this or not? But then we just chalk it up. We come up with all these excuses, right? Mm -hmm. As to why we're doing what we're doing. What are some of the things that you told yourself while you were in it? Because a lot of women tell themselves stories because they're being that good woman, 
right? They are being that person that is standing by their man and making sure they keep their family together. What are some of the things you told yourself? Absolutely. So interestingly, so my husband's the only individual I've ever been with in a serious relationship. So right away, I knew nothing else. I knew nothing but the situation I was in. I was also very, very guarded. I'm way more open now, maybe perhaps too open. And that's a lot where those codependent qualities come about. Because I noticed lately, I'm I feel like I'm, I feel, I, I believe that I'm over, like perhaps, or I tend to overshare, but before yeah. I was so guarded, no, many even people didn't even know I had children. That's how private wow. I was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember people would be like, oh my gosh, you, you like people would, cause I was sick with both my pregnancies. They would see me literally to like the final few weeks when I could only bear to, to leave the house. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. that happened. <laughs> what? Wow. So, I was just very, very guarded. Um, Yeah, again, family first. I did everything I could to make sure. Oh my gosh! I mean, uh, I my schedule or my life revolved around you know everyone else, but but me uh, for Mm -hmm. periods of times. What was so scary is how good I was at covering it up. Yeah, I was about to say how did how how did (laughs) how did you get good at that? Is it something that you always did or? You just made it your mission that this was going to be, you know, the way it was going to be. You was going to keep it private and that's it. That's so interesting you asked. And I really have to actually perhaps think about that. But I will say right away, um, I mean, I've always been technically very private. I mean, when, when I was in high school, no one even knew that I was a published author because I wrote under a, um, um, a, a pseudonym or, a you know, mm-hmm. um, a name. So yeah. people go into the local like bookshop and they're like oh what's this I'm like oh um you know or I just tell like go put it down <laughs> is it that you, you were know, shy were you shy I don't know I I perhaps yeah I think perhaps um when you was the smart kid and didn't want people to know you were smart or <laughs> well, like what I was doing <laughs> in my free time like I just found it like, like <laughs> really cool that like when I was like supposed to be on AIM or like going to hang out you know with people pulling yeah. out I was really like writing a novel or two <laughs> and I didn't you know I was weird. like when I was in high school like I didn't date um, yeah I did that I did that on purpose like just avoided every um, you know emotional you know connection in that respect because I saw just breakups unfolding all the time and I always oh, sure. avoided that but I think a lot of that comes to, I, I always liked older men. So yeah. that was another part I put up where it's like, no, I don't like the, you know, whoever yeah. at the, at the little cross team. I, I, mm-hmm. I do like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just the local whatever shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that is so interesting though. And so when you actually get with someone and you guys are together, I, I could see how it can, it can cross over because at the same time, you still, you know, it becomes that, protection but when did you realize that you was in this codependency like how did you what was that aha moment as they would say for you there was a specific aha moment that was most recently uh what I sought help uh for my husband back in mid 2022 um Mm -hmm. and I was able to speak completely openly for the very first time to to someone who was a you know, pro- professional in the industry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, for the first time I re- and he would always say to me what you're doing, this is not right. You know, over and over again, this is, this is this, this is that, this is defined as this. And I'm going, what, you know, like what I, I have this problem. He has that problem. I didn't realize how abnormal this was. And then I reached out to other resources, um, support groups at the time. And it, just unfold literally like I felt like I took my garbage and just dumped it over on the floor and was sifting through it um so it happened very 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 quickly it's funny (laughs) it's funny I know what that's like because I was I always tell the story of when I had to do um my program for Alcoholics Anonymous I you know I had to do it because I had a DUI in my mind I didn't belong there right and so Vanessa, the lady was going through all of the symptoms of uh, uh, high functioning depression, right? Functional depression, mm-hmm. right? So I'm checking all the stuff and I'm like, 
she going through this and she going through the symptoms. I'm like, I got that. And then I'm like, I got that. <laughs> and, so, and so she was like, does everybody understand? I said, I got all of these things. I checked all the boxes. She said, I know. That's why you here. And I was like, damn. <laughs> so it was like a oh, high moment for me. I was like, that's what I got. <laughs> so she was like, mm-hmm. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't something wrong. She said the she said the 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 good thing is is that things in your life that is happening to you is you know triggering this for you. So it's not that it's you know something clinically wrong. It's the the changes in your life. But when when I had that moment, that's where I did the deep dive, you know, same as you. But then you go home and your world looks totally different. Did that happen for you? Yes. Yes. And I so realized. now how do you how do you deal with this? Because now you just changed. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you would think it would be easier, and it's actually I find to be even harder. A lot harder because I'm going, oh, I actually have to tackle this head on now. I can't just go into the closet or go hide under the bed mm -hmm. play pretend today yeah <laughs> yeah no no so I really I feel like I'm facing a lot head on but you know it comes down to that motto of what you know one day at a time you yeah. know to a certain degree I, I follow that and um making small you know small um change meaningful changes and I think for me in, in terms of codependency, though I've been aware of it, it wasn't until very recently that I'm going, gee, yeah. Like when you're watching that little cartoon on YouTube and like, do I have codependent? Yeah. I'm like watching this little like little white little blob. And I'm like, oh God. So I think like my computer's like listening to me because I like popped up. I swear I didn't like Google it. I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so I was watching it and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know it's like it's like your whole world changes so you yeah. you looking at everything yourself people around you your friends and I think that's where the oversharing starts to come from mm -hmm. because now you're like okay I finally can name this thing that I've been feeling right and yeah. because I can name it now I know you know, like kind of sort of what to do to kind of face it. But now when I got to face it, I'm also changing because the people around me expect me to be the same person. Yeah. Now, yeah. now I'm not that. So how did it affect your relationships? That's a great question. Well, it's, I'm actually, it's ha all happening in real time. So <laughs> you still so got friends? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my god do i guys help me out here <laughs> um, I, <laughs> uh, but yeah no, i you know because for a while if i didn't hear from certain people i'd be like oh god what did i say what did i do and you know it's interesting i always tell people you can tell me anything you're being you know xyz i'm the most understanding open-minded down-to-earth individual just tell me let's fix it um but interestingly, I have recently cut people out of my life very, and I'm very quick and I just do yes. it. No question that. But it shouldn't come as a shock to them. It is because there are certain situations unraveled and it would be over the course of time. But then mm -hmm. my person, like, I've had enough, you're out, you're done. And I'm a very firm, you're, you're out, you're not coming back in the door shut. But that's extremely rare. That only happened, that happened this year, only two, I think one or two. Yeah, I think maximum two people, but for very, very solid reasons. That's a whole other story. But, um, yeah. no, you know, I, um, I've realized, you know, I've been going, interestingly, my groups of friends, they don't really intertwine per se, because a lot of them live internationally. They live in the city. They live here on Long Island where I live. They live in other mm -hmm. parts of the country. Um, so I'm able to tell people the same story, like, "Hey, guys, want to hear this story?" And I, I mind that I already told it like six times because it's yeah. a person, different perspective. But what was happening is I would get all these perspectives from all these different people, 
and it was just too much. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it became, it was just way too overwhelming. I'll go, well, why should I listen to that person? Look what that person's dealing with right now. That mm-hmm. I didn't tell that person the whole story. Yeah. And I, and I said, you know what? Stop. I just, what I think it was last week. I said, just stop with the sharing. Just, this is enough um, of just what's going on in my life. And yeah, like nobody's cl- clearly helping me. So they're just pulling me. <laughs> so anyway, it came down to, I actually just stopped cold turkey, just telling people anything. And what's so interesting is who the people are that have been messaging. Hey, how are you? And I know who's genuine and who's not. Mm-hmm. based off the messages and um I feel a lot better actually this week was been like the week where I haven't reached out to anyone to discuss like you know my marriage or you know yeah. what, whatever have you and I I feel really good I actually feel mm-hmm. really good in ter- not internal but I've uh taken an perhaps an introspective approach where I've absolutely you know look like, I was gonna like that I was gonna be my next question for you and interestingly enough, if this is another thing too, is I've actually given myself advice as if I were talking to someone else, which is so fascinating. And I said, I literally like, sounds like so weird, but like I sat down, spoke out loud the situation and then literally turned my chair and like gave myself the advice. And I just sat there going, how did I just, I am so good. I know yes. myself. So I'm like, oh. And I was able to like, And I think that came from, I was having dinner with a girlfriend last week in the city and she gave me a scenario and I, bam, just gave her the advice. And she was like, that was really good. I said, yeah, I do this. I did it to myself and yeah, not, not too bad. <laughs> uh, uh, because what's happening now is, you know, um, and you're going to get better and better at it because all those people who are around you it's it's time for you to actually go within because now you have to discover this new person you are and who, you know, what I say you truly are, who you truly are. Because once you discover the codependency and everything and that starts to fall off, you're basically transforming into something else. And when you when you are sitting there and you're talking to yourself and you're giving yourself this good advice, which is your affirmations for yourself is what one of our coaches, Ellie, calls you're becoming your own best friend, right? You figuring out the things that you like and what you want to do and, and and how you want to show up in the world and what that looks like for you now and what that looks like for you and your family and your husband and your kids, right? Mm-hmm. Because this this new thing is something that you sort of experience here and there throughout your life. But now it's really, you know, is really going to come to the forefront and blossom. So when you, when you are, when you are talking to people, they are who you used to be. Right. And the language is not going to match always. There's going to be some who gonna go with you, but a lot who who's not gonna go with you. And so my my next question to you is how's family life? Has that been a big adjustment or is that going in your direction? Uh in terms of like family, like my like my children and how I um Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I've noticed <clears throat> my my daughter's, you know, she's almost in her preteen, so that's a whole other ball game. And mm-hmm. I think it's just so important to, I mean, most importantly, I always would say to people, I want to be the best mom that I can be for my children, but people, not be, just people perhaps in general that have you know, been there, done a little bit older than me, they'll say, no, no, you have to be the best person for yourself first. And they're, right. they're so, you know, it's so, so true. Um, but I'm very, you know, with them, I, I'm also very open, <clears throat> you know, with them, we have a very, you know, open door policy, very conversational um, they they understand to a certain degree what's going on at home. Um, I mean, in terms of like extended family, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of people that live, actually really anyone that lives nearby in terms of family and my in-laws. They're my in-laws. Um, not <laughs> just say that to be <laughs> But yeah, but I mean, yeah. 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 
Um, <laughs> but in terms of, you know, I just, I keep, I think when it comes out with my children, I keep them busy in positive ways. I'm very, very grateful that they're so involved, you know, with, with what they need to be involved in. And I make sure that I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm there for them as much as I can, but also being mindful of my own, you know, mm-hmm. mental health and my, you know, what I can handle. The one thing that's tough though, too, now is because I have to go into Manhattan like now, like twice a week. And this is, it's October, usually it's October, November, December, mm-hmm. all the way, January, but, but anyway, through the fall up until the holidays. Yeah. I feel bad. Like I was just, I have to now, I found out go next week, another day, like back to back day overnight in the city. And I'm going, God, this is such a bad bear. Right away. I don't say, I don't worry about the oh the commute. I don't care about the, like it's oh I'm such a bad parent. I'm away from no. But I have to I have to get that out of my head. That's right. it's not true. Yeah. And you know, I would I would when you feel like you're ready, ask the kids, do they see a change in you? And what does that look like for yeah. them? Right? Because yeah. you know, once mommy starts to blossom, you just the kids is the one who notices it right away, right? Like yes. if mommy's giving me more candy, more love, more kisses, more this, more that, you like, yeah. whoa, okay. Yes. <laughs> and nobody died and everybody's here and everybody's yeah. safe and everything is mm-hmm. cool. Oh, no, de- man. Definitely. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, like my son just wanted to read a book on like these ocean creatures and I'm a big, like big, you know, huge advocate for reading and um of course my husband comes home and he and he hands him the book and I'm I'm sitting there cooking in the kitchen he's like daddy read you know read and I looked at my husband I said don't push I said if he wants to read drop everything and start reading with him right really right. I said this, don't be no do that because you want to foster that love for reading so right right yeah. right right so so life now like how has it affected you and your business what do you have coming up like how is this all coming full circle for you sure what's interesting though is I get my business perhaps is a world of its own I've always found it so surprising that no matter no matter truly what's going on in my personal life my business always seems to be very strong in fact during some of the Mm -hmm. the hardest months in 2022 my business was at its was our best performing months um so I always find that very interesting and I don't mm-hmm. know if that's dental or what you know what that no, is there's a separation there you know how to yeah. separate and you can control that yes that's oh, the thing. you have a you have yeah. control over what you do what you say how you work so that is nothing that has to really include someone else where you have to worry about their feelings and this and that you you know how to compartmentalize those things here, where it gets to the emotional side, that's where shit goes downhill, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's basically how that works. Like we could do business because we understand that. That's more of a process for me. But emotions, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could be an absolute wreck and still write, you know, review my article, do my, do our <laughs> marketing, do, you know, do everything, reach out to our partners. And it's like, how was I able to do that while my like my eyes are like red? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy! Like, how is that even possible? <laughs> I'll, I'll go. We're gonna do Zoom. It's like, no, I can't do the, the video today. Right, <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I, I oh. <laughs> that was so, so how can out. we follow you? How can we see some of your work? Sure. Absolutely. So again, I'm the CEO and publisher of East End Taste. Check us out, eastendtastemagazine.com. That's uh, my my company's website. Um, mm-hmm. As far as me, you know, me, and we're all, of course, all major social media platforms and we're responsible, you know, within uh, 24 to 48 hours. And then I have my, just I have LinkedIn and my personal Instagram account, Vanessa P. Gordon. Oh, absolutely. Vanessa, this was an amazing conversation. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Right. Thank you. Absolutely. And if you need anything, just let me know. Okay. Likewise. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. You too. Take care now. Bye.